Thank you very much for joining me and thank you for being part of this weather community and thank you for all the likes and comments on yesterday's video. All right, two areas that I am watching. All eyes have been on Debbie, but I don't like to lose sight on what's next uh, and the uh, potential of more development. This area here, that may be catching your attention. That spot could develop. We've had some heavy rain near Barbados from overnight and early this morning in some spots uh, across the uh, uh, Eastern uh, Caribbean. And then this area is going to work in a higher chance of rain even some isolated flooding, but I want to get into the possibility of development as that moves through the Caribbean and of course get to Debbie and then look out there. There's some stronger tropical waves as well uh, that are just now coming off the uh, coast of Africa. So uh, clearly a lot going on. Here is Debbie on track, uh, continues to strengthen. It should be a hurricane by the time we get into tonight. Unfortunately, it does continue to strengthen as we've been talking about for I think almost two weeks now. There's no reason for it not to. It should be a category one, category two hurricane. Can't rule out a major hurricane as it moves on shore in a similar location to where Adalia made landfall last year. And then uh, for our friends in uh, southern Georgia over toward parts of southern South Carolina, it's just going to sit there. Historic rain will be a massive issue out of that as it just kind of almost stalls out or really slows down as we get into the upcoming week. But you see it here getting better organized in the eastern Gulf of Mexico where there's very warm, uh, 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 very warm water. It just kind of acts as fuel, but this rain lifting to the north trying to get out of Cuba. Still some of those feeder bands in Cuba where we've had flooding over the last uh, several days as this was a tropical uh, uh, disturbance just kind of marching across Cuba. So that's lifting up there. You see the rain bands there, but look at what's next. You can see here we are in Puerto Rico, Antigua, Barbuda, Barbados, St. Lucia, uh, Trinidad and Tobago, and you can see this blob that uh, is kind of marching our way. It is not organized now, but there's a lot of rain with it. And there are some signs that may try to develop in the Caribbean for the upcoming week. And I want to show you why. I want to show you that big ingredient for the upcoming hurricane season. So watching this, but another area here in a, a couple more waves that are coming off the coast of Africa. So more uh, tropical waves out there. And as we get into August, it is going to simply, we're in August, but as we get deeper into August, it is simply going to get more and more active as, uh, as we've been uh, uh, looking forward to, not in the good sense of looking forward to it, but just we know that we're going to enter into this really active period. Now, as far as the area to watch, uh, the new area to watch in the short term, as this moves in near Barbados, uh, even near Dominica, and then all the way south through uh, Grenada, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, uh, Trinidad, uh, we're going to see this tropical wave moving in short term, not seeing signs of development. As this tropical wave moves across deeper into the week, especially late week near Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, that's when it may start to show some signs of development. Now, I mentioned Jamaica. I'm not saying it's going to develop a before it moves into Jamaica, just once this wave gets near us in Jamaica, we'll start to see some signs of development. But I'm, either way, it's going to bring some of us some uh, flooding. But once we get into the Central and Western Caribbean later in the week, that's when it could start to develop. And you could see why. Just a sampling of some of the water temperatures. Debbie is feeding off of these warm water temperatures, 32 degrees uh, Celsius. That's about 90, almost 92 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Super warm water right here. And you can see it through the Bahamas, 31 degrees. Celsius, 88 degrees Fahrenheit, and then back through the Caribbean, 29 to 30 degrees Celsius, so well into the 80s Fahrenheit. So the water temperatures are definitely warm enough for any of these tropical waves to develop. It'll be other conditions uh, really in the upper atmosphere, what's kind of going on up above our heads, I should say, uh, to whether or not these develop. Now, this is the biggest ingredient for the rest of the hurricane season, and I've been talking about this, I think, since January, and this is why a barrel got stronger. One of the reasons reasons uh, that Debbie is getting stronger will become a hurricane. You see the, these uh, kind of colors here, these brighter colors right where this tropical wave is going to go over. Well, that's high ocean heat content. That is not just warm water. That is warm water that goes way down. So it really acts as fuels. These storms or tropical waves pass over the water. It churns it up. Sometimes it churns up cooler water, and that helps kind of weaken it or prevent development. But the warm water goes down so far that it is going to continue to bring up more wa warm water as these areas move over it, and it acts as fuel for this. So that's why we've seen things rapidly intensify, and that's why I don't want to lose sight of this tropical wave moving 
moving in. I don't mean that in an alarming way. I'm not seeing these massive signs of development, but there are some ingredients there uh, that could uh, give us some development later into the upcoming week. And this is the wind shear I mentioned above our heads, right? So this is, I know this map is super colorful and tons of lines on it, and it is kind of, kind of crazy looking. But as we get into Wednesday, uh, there's not a ton of wind shear. In, there is some uh, in the Central and Western Caribbean, but there's not a, there's not a lot. Wind shear is good where you see this kind of red shading, the wind shear kind of rips apart developing tropical systems. It's winds above our head, kind of comes in the opposite direction, rips apart the developing showers and storms, and that's what we like to see. There's not a lot of wind shear, plus I showed you the water temperature is very warm, high ocean heat content, so we have three ingredients in play for the possibility of some development later this week. So let me show it to you here. I'm going to get back to Debbie, of course, in just a moment, but let me show you this. So here's the rain that's going to be working, and for some of us, please keep me posted in the comments comments, um, uh, put your location if you're getting some of that rain as we go forward. But you see it picking up. This is the tropical way moving in. A better chance of rain even uh, tomorrow in some spots. We're going to see some areas of flooding, some of the typical spots, say over toward Trinidad that may flood. We'll get some flooding, even parts of Guyana, northeastern uh, Venezuela. And you see that rain moving back towards St. Vincent, the Grenadines, and Grenada, where we're dealing with some of the recovery efforts uh, from a barrel. Now, this is by Tuesday. So here's Tuesday, and Debbie's way up there, but here's Tuesday, and you see this here, not organized at this time. Now, this could bring us a better chance of some showers across the ABC Islands, where we could use a little bit of rain, where it has been so very dry. By Wednesday, you see some of the rain here popping up Haiti, the Dominican Republic, still not organized. But let me take you out toward the end of the week. This here is by Thursday. This is when it may start to develop some. So by Thursday, Thursday and a Friday, the rain chance will increase for parts of Haiti uh, over toward Cuba and back through Jamaica. And then after this, it's kind of a wait and see. Now, I'll know more leading up to this time frame, uh, but there are some indications the American model model, uh, the Icon German model occasionally wants to develop something and then swing it back toward the Gulf of Mexico. It's not a guarantee. Uh, I had a good handle as far as uh, knowing that Debbie would eventually develop. It took forever, but it did develop. This one, I'm not quite sure if it does develop, but I have been seeing signs of that. That's why I wanted to talk about that yesterday in depth, and I'm doing so again today. I'll get back to some of those rain totals in a moment, but this here is Debbie. You see the rain finally leaving the Cuba area. Tornado threat across the uh, peninsula of a uh, Florida as this starts to work in. The landfall looks to be up by the Big Bend by about midday tomorrow. And then one of the biggest issues with this, you see this working in uh, to portions of North Florida. It just almost stalls out or just kind of spins around up here over toward the low country of southeastern Georgia, southern South Carolina, where they could be measuring some of the rain uh, in feet upwards of uh, 12 to even 18 inches of some uh, rain. That is a possibility. A lot of uncertainty when the models and the environmental conditions show that something may stall. Of course, we know that from history with, with Dorian. A lot of weird stuff happens, tricky stuff happens, and overall, a lot of uncertainty with the forecast. This is by uh, Wednesday, big donut hole of an eye, of the, the middle of the system there. Models all in good agreement, and you see how they kind of look like a spider in here. They kind of get all crazy. That's because some of them do a loop, some of them stall. Others want to kind of just uh, have this move away. So high uncertainty here, but a higher certainty of some impressive flooding, impressive in the bad sense, over toward parts of Georgia and South Carolina. So let me show you the ICON model now. That's done a pretty good job this season uh, with uh, some of these systems. So here's Debbie. Here's this uh, tropical uh, wave here moving in. Here's that blocker, that area of high pressure, keeping this moving west-northwest. Flow around this is clockwise, so helping to steer Debbie. Debbie's kind of uh, going on the outer fringes of this, but then it starts to get locked in. High pressure kind of nudges away just a little bit, so there's not much to actually move uh, Debbie at this point. But there's the increased rain here. This is by Monday. Let me take you into Tuesday and stop it here. By Tuesday, you see uh, oh, Debbie just uh, tons and tons of rain. Still a tropical storm. If it if the center gets off of water, uh, it'll act as fuel again. It could eventually become a hurricane again. And then you see here, there's the increased rain in parts of the Caribbean. And this is by Tuesday, but by Wednesday, that's when we start to see some hints of development. And you see it right here, this spot right here, uh, as we work our way into the Caribbean. Here's Jamaica, the ICON model showing this. And even as I was showing you too, the American model is showing this. And occasionally they want to just start to develop something and swing it back toward the Yucatan. Always keep an eye on uh, Mexico over toward Belize and then work it here. And then hopefully by Wednesday, uh, this should, by Wednesday, this, this system needs to, to kick 
break out of there. So uh, keep an eye on that. Here's Bermuda right there and watching the Atlantic region of Canada up there. So a couple spots to watch. And on top of that, we have some strong tropical waves that are coming off the coast of Africa. And you see the winds, this turning into a hurricane up here and then watching out for some gusty or winds. Nothing organized. You're not seeing a spin over the next couple of days. So while we're going to have some rain across Trinidad or over toward uh, St. Lucia and uh, Barbados, uh, we're not going to have a name system or anything like that. But we could get some uh, gustier winds picking up a bit. This here is by Monday. There's the landfall and winds could be over 100 miles per hour where that makes landfall up toward uh, north uh, Florida and the Big Bend area and then working in and just kind of sitting there for days. So this is Monday afternoon. Then we get into Tuesday afternoon, stopping the clock right here. And you see some increased winds here moving into the central uh, Caribbean. That here is with that tropical wave. And then that spin just there Tuesday into Wednesday over parts of Georgia, over toward uh, the uh, Carolinas, mainly South Carolina, just spinning there. You see that donut hole right there. That's the center of it. And if the center gets back over water, I mentioned that could uh, strengthen some. But at this point, this is that pocket that I'll be watching. And we'll just see how this progresses across. But either way, that heads up in Jamaica that by the end of the week, we should get a better chance of rain and even some gustier winds as we work our way into Thursday. It's this pocket here that will continue to move to the west northwest and may eventually develop very warm water to feed off of there. That all corresponds to the seas. Obviously, the wave heights super high, super dangerous in some spots with uh, Debbie, which is about to become a hurricane. And there is that tropical wave that's moving in. So uh, that time of year, you're really dodging stuff. If you're a sailor, captain, whatever you got going on on the water, really dodging a few areas southeast coast of the U.S. and, and the northern Bahamas will see some elevated seas, depending on how this kind of wiggles around. You see the expanding of seas here. Here. This here is by Wednesday. So this is Wednesday. And then you see right there some choppier conditions in the Central Caribbean. Then we get over here and there's just tons of action. Four different spots. A name system here, a name system here, and two more that may get a name in the Eastern Pacific. So very active. There is Carlotta. There is Daniel. I know we have Hawaii over here. Not seeing these uh, a threat to land. Carlotta kind of just moving out and then weakening. Uh, Daniel's actually going to kind of go to the north and then should weaken. So far enough away from land and these two spots should stay away from land. I always watch to see if anything tries to uh, hook back, but super active on the eastern Pacific side. So clearly the hurricane season everywhere uh, getting very active. Now as far as the rain goes, crazy amounts of rain. I touched on that earlier uh, with Debbie. Elsewhere it's going to be spotty, but as we zoom across, this with these brighter colors, 25 uh, or 50 millimeters of rain or two inches of rain, that would be if you get a couple thunderstorms. Northeastern Caribbean, Anguilla, Antigua, Barbuda, uh, Montserrat, Saba, uh, U.S. Virgin Islands, British Virgin Islands, not a ton of rain, but we get down here to the south. That's where it's going to pick up. Here's a Dominica over toward Martinique, uh, St. Lucia. By the way, Dominica, St. Lucia, incredible performances in the, the Olympics. I was watching that yesterday. So very proud. Uh, but we'll see some surges of rain the next couple of days. Here's Grenada and Trinidad. Now, this rain here, maybe a little bit up here or a little bit over here. We'll just see how it evolves, but we'll have some spots for three-day totals over a hundred millimeters of rain or four inches of rain. That's why I was mentioning the flooding. Thank you for spreading the word about that. Zooming down to uh, Trinidad and Tobago, for example, see the white, even the black shading showing up. We could potentially get a few spots. Here's northeastern uh, Venezuela of 150 millimeters of rain or six inches of rain. Not for everyone, but in some locations as we work our way forward over the next few days, watching out for that flood threat. There's northeastern Venezuela, not as much as we get down towards Suriname. Could have some isolated flooding in Guyana. And then scattered areas of rain and storms, Panama lifting north, all the way up through uh, Belize, Guatemala. Not as much in the Yucatan and Mexico. Same thing, uh, Mexico, uh, not a ton of rain. A little bit more as you get over toward the uh, Pacific side. Now, the Atlantic region of Canada, I'm keeping an eye on this system. Obviously, Debbie, that is working its way into uh, Florida by tomorrow. And then we'll kind of see what happens. I mentioned how a system that shows signs of stalling out, very difficult to predict long term. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll have some uh, scattered showers moving by, but we'll see what happens kind of down to the south. And if anything tries to move up to the north later in the week, I'll be uh, watching that for you. So for Jamaica, rain chance uh, tomorrow and Tuesday, we're looking at about a 50% chance. But the end of the week, it's going to get higher end of the week and the weekend, it will get higher for the uh, Cayman Islands. Rain chance, though, is on the higher side. Please let me know. It's not all day rain, but we're going to see it picking up in the uh, 
eastern Caribbean, especially the southeastern Caribbean, with that tropical wave watching over toward Trinidad for some flooding. Barbados, very active the next few days. Thank you for leaving those comments. St. Lucia, very active. They elevate a chance of rain, a 70% chance of rain tomorrow. In Grenada, a 70% chance of rain tomorrow. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and about a 50 to 60% chance in Martinique. 40 to 50% chance in Dominica, 40 to 50% chance in Guadeloupe, and then it continues to get less as we march to the north. Antigua and Barbuda, this is isolated stuff. We may see a passing shower. St. Kitts and Nevis and Montserrat, Anguilla and St. Bart's. The rain chance is not too high, about a 20 to 30% chance. St. Martin, Saba, and Stacia, and an isolated shower or a thunderstorm with that heat around in Puerto Rico. Isolated passing shower, U.S. and British Virgin Islands, and about a 40% chance across the uh, Bahamas. Keeping an eye on Debbie, that is off to the west. 20 to 30% chance Turks and Caicos, 30 to 40% chance in the Dominican Republic. Isolated shower storm as we work our way toward Haiti, a 30% chance. 20 to 30% chance in Belize. More of the rain is down to the south. Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire throughout the week will see a better chance of at least getting some uh, passing showers with that tropical wave that is going to move into the uh, Central Caribbean. Guyana, 60% chance today. Rain chance only 30% tomorrow and Tuesday for Suriname. Rain chance about 50% in Cuba. That's kind of what's left of Debbie in the western end of Cuba, lifting up to the north. Costa Rica, rain chance goes down a tick over toward Panama as well. About a 60% chance tomorrow. 40% chance in Nicaragua. About a 40% chance of scattered showers and a few thunderstorms in Honduras. And looking at a 60% chance in the next two days, Guatemala and El Salvador. Mexico City, rain chance about 50%. So that's gone down from what we've had the last few weeks in a 40% chance in the next two days, the Yucatan uh, Peninsula. As we get back toward northern Colombia, 30% chance and a 30 to 40% chance in northern Venezuela. Bermuda now looking good, also watching all the tropical systems uh, for Bermuda. So Debbie continues to get stronger. It will become a Category 1 hurricane, but it could get even stronger than that. That new tropical wave that is going to arrive in the eastern Caribbean. Heavy areas of rain at times. I'll be watching for development as we go throughout the week, and we are entering into a very active time in the hurricane season, so we'll take it storm by storm together. Thank you for being part of this channel. Please be safe. Have a good rest of your day.